Do you think you've mastered emergency medicine? Let's put your knowledge to the test. A 45-year-old man presents to the emergency department after falling from a ladder approximately four feet. He briefly lost consciousness and now reports retrograde amnesia lasting about 40 minutes. His GCS is 15 one hour after the injury. He has vomited once but denies headache or seizure. He is not on anticoagulants and has no history of seizure disorder. Neurologic examination is normal. According to the Canadian CT head rule, what is the most appropriate next step in management? And the set of rules that we use for adults are the Canadian head CT rules. These apply to any patient who has a head injury with either loss of consciousness, amnesia, or confusion afterwards. So we wouldn't even be applying the Canadian rules to patients who are completely alert, appropriate, didn't lose consciousness, remember everything. We wouldn't even be talking about those patients. Those patients would not be CT'd. But if they have a head injury and they have some subtle complicating factors such as losing consciousness, consciousness or being confused afterwards, we can apply these rules to them. They have to be in the age range from 16 to 65, so these rules do not apply to children and they do not apply to older adults. That's very important because, again, older adults have much higher risk of bad outcomes with minor head injury and we want to be more aggressive about imaging those patients. They also do not apply to any patients who are on anticoagulation or have any evidence of post-traumatic seizure activity. So if your patient uh, fits into one of these categories, you would not want to use these rules. You would want to go ahead and obtain imaging. But assuming they're healthy, they have no seizure, uh, they're in the appropriate age range, and they just maybe have a little subtle uh, confusion or amnesia after the event, the Canadian head CT rules are for them. So the criteria that should uh, prompt you to get a head CT include any abnormal GCS more than two hours after the injury. So maybe the patient comes in immediately after the injury and they're a little bit off, they're a little bit confused, their GCS is 14. We would expect their sensorium to clear and we would expect them to have a normal GCS by two hours. If they don't, we want to go ahead and image those patients. If they have any evidence of open or depressed skull fracture, and we'll talk about what clinical signs we'd be looking for in just a moment, we want to go ahead and CT. So we want to really get a good look at these patients' heads. We want to palpate all over the skull and make sure that we're satisfied that there's no evidence of fracture.